Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're very excited to let you guys know that HitFilm 16 is now available, both the Pro and Express versions. If you missed Josh's video going over the new features, we've got a lot of great things going into this release, including a new system for more detailed 3D models, a new light flares effect, HEVC support, a voiceover recorder, and more. You can find Josh's video in the card on screen if you haven't seen that already, and you can find links for the downloads in the description. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we used CamTrack AR, Unreal Engine 4, and HitFilm to create a cyberpunk-themed 3D composite. We did something very similar a couple weeks ago with The Mandalorian, and you guys really seemed to like that. So we thought we'd do it again with Cyberpunk coming out very soon. I don't have pocket! <laughs> we also wanted to give a shout out to one of our community members, Calvin Serrano. You guys probably know him for his help on Halo Jump and Rise of the Dark Side. He recently helped out on a collaboration with Mike Diva and CD Projekt Red to create the Run the Jewels music video featured on the official Cyberpunk channel. Calvin is really skilled with Blender, but he also did composite some of these scenes inside of HitFilm, which is really cool to see because it's an incredibly high quality result. You can find the full music video down in the description. Similar to the last tutorial that we did, this isn't going to be a step-by-step, -step, super detailed walkthrough because there is a lot that we have to do. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And if I find any videos or tutorials that I think will help you create this kind of scene, I'll definitely be sure to link them in the description as well. First up is capturing your scene with CamTrack AR. This is a free iOS app that we released just a month or two ago. And the great thing about it is that it captures both your video and the camera tracking data at the same time. You can film something like a green screen wall like we've done here without any tracking markers, and the app will get all the tracking data that it needs from using AR Kit. Once we have our footage recorded, we can now move into creating the environment. For this, I'm going to install Unreal Engine 4, Quixel Bridge, which will give me access to a large library of mega scans, and Blender, which I'll use to create the ground layer. Before we get into it, I do just want to let you know that this isn't a tutorial you should watch if you've never used Unreal Engine before. For that, I would recommend checking out the Unreal Online Learning Platform and taking the course called Your First Hour with Unreal Engine. This will introduce you and get you up and running really quickly. Inside of Unreal, we can now start building the environment. In the Mandalorian tutorial, I used an alpha brush and a landscape to automatically generate the hills and dips inside of my surface because I didn't want to have to do it manually. This time, I wanted a little bit more control over the street and the way that the textures looked, so I opted to go with vertex painting. Vertex painting means you can literally paint the materials onto your mesh, and it's a really easy and natural way to do it. This technique doesn't work on landscapes by default, it has to have an exported mesh, so inside of Blender, what I'll do is create a new plane and scale it up. I'll go into edit mode by either hitting the tab key or coming up to this menu here, and you'll note that there are only four vertices at the moment. This is called vertex painting, so it needs a lot more in order to work. So I'll right click and hit subdivide, increase the number of cuts, and then I'll do it again for even more detail. You can find a more detailed tutorial on vertex painting on the Quixel YouTube channel. According to that video, you need a healthy amount of vertex points in order for this to work, so there's not really a specific number that you should go for. I'll export this plane as an FBX and import it into Unreal. Now inside of Quixel Bridge, I'm going to browse the numerous surfaces that they have available for something that I like. Because I was creating a street, I went for more of an asphalt texture, as well as a cracked concrete texture. Because this was going to be a close-up shot, I went with a 4K texture for each. I downloaded and exported the materials into my Unreal project. In Unreal, I can multi-select these materials, come up to the Megascans plugin button, and create a material blend. This is going to combine all of the materials together into one. Now I'll come up here and switch the mode to Mesh Paint, adjust my brush size, and then using the different channels, paint the layers onto my scene. I've also added an option for puddles, so I can draw those as well. You have additional controls for the way the materials look inside of the master material. So in this case, they're a bit big, so I'll change the tiling in order to make the texture smaller. You can also change the way the materials blend together using the height maps. This results in a more realistic blend. For the sidewalk that we ended up having our character stand on and the curbs along the side of the street, I also used a Megascans mesh. Now that we have the core of our street set up, we can begin adding decals in order to add detail. You can think of decals as a sticker that you place on top of your meshes. They're a separate category inside of Quixel Bridge. They import just the same way as the Megascans materials and meshes. You can place the decal actor pretty much anywhere, but it does work better on flat surfaces. I use decals for the road lines and the debris around the trash cans. They're a really easy way to add a lot of grungy detail and break up the sort of uniformity that you might get with your surfaces if you were to just leave them as is. You can find more tutorials on using decals on the Quixel YouTube channel. 
For the buildings, I use the Brushify Urban Buildings Pack, which you can find on the Epic Games Marketplace. This comes with individual building meshes, as well as blueprints, to quickly get things going and create something like a city block. You can change the materials as well. In this case, I made the windows brighter and had them appear more often. For the other models inside my scene, like the motorbikes, the neon signs, and the street lamps, I used Sketchfab.com, which is a fantastic resource for 3D models containing hundreds of different things, all really high quality. In most cases, I downloaded the GLTF version and added that into Unreal. In order to import this kind of model, you have to enable it inside of the plugins section. If the model imported in pieces, you can either drag them all into your scene and that'll work, or you can create a blueprint to combine them all together into one layer. In terms of the lighting for this scene, I pretty much kept it to only the neon lights that you see on the street. I did have a directional light that I used as the lightning flashes, and I keyframed that to flicker on and off over the course of the scene. For the neon lights, I found that the rectangle light was a good one to use because you can customize the height and width. One of the things that makes a really big difference in the scene is the exponential height fog. This is going to add a lot of atmosphere and it quite literally diffuses the light when you add it in. Just be sure to go into the details and check mark volumetric fog. This changes the way that the fog renders and helps diffuse the light a lot more. Inside of each light, you have a slider for volumetric scattering intensity. This affects how much the light is scattered, so you can turn it down to zero for not at all, or really crank it up to make it look a lot more foggy. Once I'm happy with how my environment is looking, I can bring in the cam track data and see how my environment looks through the lens of this camera. Inside of Blender, I'll import the .hfcs file that comes with each cam track recording. Again, we go into more detail with our other tutorial, but you do need the plugin for Blender that allows you to import this kind of data. Export the camera as an FBX, and in the Bake Animation dropdown, be sure to set the Simplify to zero. This prevents it from smoothing out the tracking data. Inside of Unreal, go up to Cinematics, Add Level Sequence. This will create a timeline inside of Sequencer, which is how you edit the video. Come over to the Actions dropdown, select Import, then choose your FBX file. Match your check marks to what is shown here. Come over and set the sequence to 60 FPS, and you should see that your camera is moving as it did in the real world. If you need to move your camera but not mess up the tracking data, what you can do is create an empty actor and attach your camera to it. You can then move the empty actor to put the camera into the correct position. Inside of the camera details, I'll also adjust the sensor width and height to be close to 16 by 9 in order to match the final aspect ratio. Once I'm happy with how this looks, I can export it from Unreal to HitFilm by clicking Render as Movie. I'll leave it as an AVI, and I would recommend using 4K even if you're shooting in 1080p because it'll give you a lot more detail. Inside of HitFilm, I'll drag and drop both the green screen footage and the exported background, and you can see that the camera aligns already because all the tracking data is there. Now it's just a matter of compositing our actor into the scene. To do this, we'll first mask out any areas or props that we don't want to see, chroma key out the background, and then color match the two plates using curves, hue saturation and lightness, and other stylizing effects like bleach bypass, chromatic aberration, and a vignette. There is a lot of work that goes into making this kind of scene and it's hard to condense it into a tutorial. So if you feel that we left anything out, do let us know and we'll cover it in the future. Or if it's an easy question, we'll respond in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe for more filmmaking and visual effects tutorials and let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.